I've got Mike Ventry with us here from Advanta IRA. Mike, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks for having me back. It's great to see you. And uh, we, we had you on about six months ago, I think we figured out. And maybe not much has changed in the world, but uh, the demand for what you're doing has changed in light of some of the, the, the tax bill and the other situations in the economy. Am I right? That's right. So, all right, let's talk a little bit. Let me go ahead and get this question out of the way. Let's talk a little bit about the, the tax bill. Any direct implications for you guys? Not any direct other than most people's taxes have gone down. So we're seeing a lot of people convert their traditional IRAs to Roth IRAs. All right. So let's do this if we could. Let's just go back and review a little bit and uh, help our audience out. There may be some people out here who are hearing about this for the very first time. We don't want to presume anything. So let me ask the question. What is, um, what is it that you guys do? What is a self-directed IRA? Back in 1975, when the IRS created retirement accounts, Title II, they put in the tax code the taxpayer could direct their own funds. So it's nothing new. It's been around for 40 years. However, the different custodians allow you to hold different assets. Up until the last several years, most of your Fidelity Schwab's broker dealers, your local banks, only allow you to hold privately held or publicly held stocks, bonds, mutual funds, where there are now a handful of custodians like Advanta will let you hold alternative assets such as the most popular real estate. And so then you see it on TV, every other commercial, put gold in your yeah. IRA. And that's kind of opened the door, I think, to people knowing what they can do with their IRAs. So if I'm working in the corporate world, is it possible for me to tell whoever's managing my 401k that I want to invest my money in real estate? Well, if it's your current jobs 401k, you need to check with your 401k administrator. Likely you won't be able to use those funds unless you're 59 and a half. If it's from an old 401k, you definitely can roll that tax free into a traditional IRA. Okay, well, I'm only 59 and a quarter, so I guess I'm out of luck on that. But uh, anyway, that's a Couple subject for a different months. day. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's take your average um, uh, career minded person here who is, uh, say, in their 40s and uh, they've got their 401k rolling on, they've got a good job. Um, what are their options? Can, can, is it possible to have more than one IRA? They can. I mean, they can have their 401k with their employer and a personal IRA, which they're making their annual $5,500 a year contributions. Um, so okay. you can have both. They can max both out. Plus with Advanta IRA, they can open other types of accounts, right? Yep. Health, health savings accounts, educational savings accounts, Roths. We have every imaginable qualified retirement plan. And all of those things can be self-directed. Yes, sir. All right. Now, uh, let's clear up this little bit of confusion. What's the difference between uh, a traditional IRA and a Roth IRA? A traditional IRA is a person has put money in that account. At the end of the year, they are able to take that amount off their income so they pay less taxes. A Roth is the opposite. They had no tax benefit from making those contributions. However, in the future, when they take the profit out of their IRA, they never pay taxes. I know which one I would rather be in. What, what, what do you prefer? <laughs> the one everybody wants to be in, the Roth. Right, because the gain is never taxed. Free money. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, you know, I just had a question. Let's suppose you use money in a Roth IRA and you buy a rental property. Can you depreciate that on the schedule and still get your cash flow out of it tax-free? You cannot. There's nothing to write off, there's, so there is no taxes. All right, so there's nothing. To, you can't depreciate them. Yes, yeah, so there's right. nothing to depreciate it against. Yeah, so there's a, well, you know, your other income, but... Um, <laughs> So yeah, you well, lose a little bit. Well, it's not your other income that's taking consideration because the Roth is the buyer, is the owner. It doesn't have any other income. Right, right. That makes well, sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. But that your other sense. incomes are relevant to your Roth IRA and what it does. 
because when you're talking about an IRA, the IRA is a whole separate entity from you, the person. I tell people, look at this IRA as another person. This other person is the buyer on the contract. This other person sends the earnest money, pays for the rehab, collects the rents. Yeah, so you can't take a deduction for the contributions I made to my church. That's right. So you can't claim the deductions made, you know, that were incurred by another entity. So we just, right. we just answered the question. That's right. That's good. That's it. All right. Well, um, now, uh, I think a person is going to say, wait, I got a $5,500 limit here. I come over and I start an IRA with you. How am I going to buy real estate for $5,500? What can I get for $5,500? Do I have to wait three more years while I got $15,000? And then what are you going to buy for fifteen? dollars Well, there's different things you can do. There's tax liens. There's non-recourse loans. We see people all the time open an IRA with a couple thousand dollars and they'll go out and get a non-recourse loan, 100% financing. Uh, you know, they'll buy a $100,000 house with a $5,000 IRA. You know, granted, 100% of their income is going to be taxed in the 30s, but, you know, those people will tell you it's free money. They didn't have $100,000. Uh, and we'll find people that have million dollar IRAs that do the same thing. And they'll tell you the same thing. It's, I never even used my own money. It's free money. So then there are people like me that would rather die than have their IRAs taxed. So it just depends on what your scenario is. Okay. So when we get back from this break, we're going to, I'm going to have you tell people how they can put a lot more than the $5,500 limit into their IRA. All right. Because there's some strategies around that, right? Sounds good. Okay, he's Mike Ventry. He is the business development manager for Advanta IRA, working in the southeastern office here in Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm Roger Blankenship, your host. We'll be back right after this. Peter Faulkner here. I attended a one-day flip starter training session led by Roger Blankenship. And I was amazed to see what has happened in Roger's life in the last 15 or plus years, flipping over 800 houses. And in this one day uh, training, he told how he did it and what the pitfalls, the blessings, the benefits, and how to do it. And I was so impressed with how well organized and how smooth the training went today. If you're tempted or encouraged to go, go. It was not a bad price. If uh, you get a chance to do it, even just to consider investing. But uh, I just want to thank Roger for a great day today and appreciate what he's doing. Thank you, Roger. And we are back. I am Roger Blankenship. I teach people how to make money in real estate. And I've got Mike Ventry with me. And he's teaching us all how we can keep more of what we make by protecting it in tax-deferred or tax-free individual retirement accounts. Did I get it right? Got it. All right. And 401ks too. Okay. So, uh, okay. So what's the difference between a 401k and an IRA? Well, 401k is an employer plan sponsored. If our plan is for a self-employed person and then your IRA is an individual retirement account. This is just an interesting question. Just popped into my head. Does Advanta provide um, employer employment um you know, do you manage retirement plans for like employers, for all of their employees? Our plan document only allows for an individual self-employed person, their partner and their spouse. It's otherwise known as a solo K. So the answer to that would be no, we don't. However, we provide record keeping services for people who are leasing plan documents that allow for a hundred employees you know, that sort of thing. But Advanta's plan document is a solo K plan. Okay. All right. Well, that's probably getting into some technical stuff that beyond us a little bit. But before we went to the break, I promised everyone that you were going to tell us how we can put way more than our $5,000 annual contribution straight into an IRA. And it's all legal and above board. So how do we do that? Well, one thing I try to start off with this is there's a difference between gains and contributions. So when we're talking about you can only put in $5,500 a year, that's cash out of your personal account for your annual contribution. 
you could make unlimited amount of money a year flipping houses, rents. So there's the, that distinction. Um, but you can't, far, you can't make unlimited money on $5,500. Well, I mean, you can make 10 times that, which has nothing to do with your $5,500 contribution. I just try to let people know that because some people get stuck on the 5,500 and they think, wow, I'm only going to be able to make $5,500 a year. And no, you can only contribute $5,500 a year. But if you, um, if you have your own company, those contribution limits change, don't they? Right. And you get into a 401k, you can start talking about, you know, 54 to $60,000 a year annual contributions if you have the earned income. So you can put up to half of, half of your earned income up to 54 to $60,000? Well, the first 18000 is a dollar for dollar you can put in there. And then after that, it's 25% of your ordinary income up to 54000 if you're under 50 and then 60 if you're over 50. Okay. So if you're doing that, it doesn't take you long to get to where you're, no. you can, you can do some business out of your IRA. Yeah. That's one way to get it going. Okay. Now another possibility is um, the IRA um, as an entity can be a member of an LLC. That's correct. Okay. It could be the single member or can, can partner with even you or yes. your spouse, or your brother, or your business partner. Okay, so let's be careful about that because um, I've, I've been told that we're, your IRA can't do business with you or your spouse. It has to be uh, an arm's length unrelated transaction. But you're saying that we can do what? Partner? You can partner, right. There are disqualified qualified people to this IRA. Can't buy or sell to this person lease, provide services. However, a disqualified person can partner with another disqualified person, meaning there's two buyers on the contract. They're both buying together. So they're not actually transacting with each other. Right. And you know, here at Flipping America, uh, through my own business, we partner with people with IRAs all the time. And I had a husband and wife team who each had two IRAs. And so when we did up the contract, there were five entities on the contract, mine and the four of them. Mm -hmm. So not exactly split personalities, but um, it, it made the record keeping interesting, but it's all okay. It's all okay. All right. And so that's a way that you can start with just a little bit and you can, you can make it grow. You can make it happen. When we get back from this break, what I'd like to do is um, talk a little bit about, let's, let's, let's take someone from square one. Let's take a 30-year-old average listener to this show who um, is, is into their career a little bit. They don't want to stop their career, but they think they would like to acquire rental houses, and they've got a little bit of money. And then uh, we'll go to the other end of the spectrum, and uh, we'll do that when we get back. We're going we're gonna to show some people some practical ways to make money, right? We're going to do it. Okay. Now, here at Flipping America, we don't encourage everyone to just drop what you're doing and go start flipping houses like you see on TV. That isn't for everyone. And the way they do it on TV isn't the way it's really done. If you want to do that, that's fine. It can be very lucrative, but we encourage you to get some information, get a mentor, and follow a proven path. We can help you with all of that. But even then, most of you are going to stay in your job and you're going to continue to make income in your job, and you're going to invest in real estate on the side. And we are here to help you with that. And when we come back from the next break, we're going to do just that. Mike and I are going to talk through a couple of scenarios and try to get as specific as we can. As always, if you have questions about this or any other real estate topic, you can send them to questions at flippingamericanetwork.com. That's questions at flippingamericanetwork.com. And if you want to talk specifically with Mike, you can call him. I'm going to go ahead and give your number, Mike. Um, 800-425-0653. That will get you to Advanta IRA. And uh, in a little while, we'll give that number and website again. But uh, right now, we've got to go to a break. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Stu Schuyler from Tampa, Florida. And I'm here and just attended Flipping America by Roger Blankenship. And this guy is awesome. I am excited. I am going to find a house in the next week or two. And I may even hire Roger to be my mentor. 
and uh, I'm going to go make some money, and I'm going to have some residual income, and I'm going to stop working for a living, and I'm going to make my money work for me with the help of Roger. I urge everyone to attend this meeting. It's awesome. All I can say is Roger's a great guy. I wish he had been my dad, but I'm 20 years older than him, so that wasn't possible. Anyhow, I made a great friend here today, and we're going to keep on trucking, baby. God bless America, and God bless this company. And we are back. I'm Roger Blankenship, and I teach people how to make money in real estate. And I've got with me my good friend, Mike Ventry. And uh, let's go right to uh, cut to the chase. Let's take your average 30-year-old person here who or 32-year-old who's got a job and, and let's help them get started. They're going to come to you. They've got their, their you know, employer's IRA, the 401k over there. But now they're going to come to you and they're going to open something up. Um, they make good money. Then this, this person, you know, is a web developer and they make $120,000 a year. And so they could easily put, you know, fifteen twenty thousand dollars $20,000 into something. Please direct them. For them to put in over the $5,500 annual contribution for an IRA, they would have to be self-employed. So if they're currently working with an employer and they have a 401k, that's going to limit them to that $5,500 contribution. Can they start another company on the side? They can. And in that case, they can open a, another 401k for that company, which would allow them to put sometimes 10 times what you can into an IRA. Or could they do the IRA and a health savings account? And they can do a health savings account and they can do an ESA account for their brother's kids. They may not have children yet. So there's different vehicles for them to put more and more money into qualified plans. What if you open up a, an, an educational savings account, an ESA, and uh, the money doesn't get end up getting used? Maybe the brother never has children or maybe the children decide that they don't want to go to college. That's a good question that I couldn't answer. Okay. Well, sorry, I didn't think of it sooner, but uh, I just thought of it. All right. So this, let, let's just take this average person here who now they've opened up their IRA with $5,500 and uh, they're thinking about their other options and what they're going to do. But where do they go now with this 5,500 to start making it grow? Well, they can purchase a real estate uh, contract and assign it to someone else they find would pay more money for the house, which would generate a profit. It's called an assignment. They could do real estate tax liens, which are inexpensive, which can lead to owning property. They could buy a property and their IRA could get a non-recourse loan for the difference of the 5500 uh, and then be responsible for the taxes on the percentage of what they leveraged. Uh, they could partner with themselves or other people to get real estate into their IRA. So they've got a lot of different options. Yeah. Oh, and, and, you know, one of them I was hoping you would say is they could come partner with the Flipping America guy. We could show you how to get lined up and get into some deals. <laughs> but all right. Now I've heard you say you can teach someone how to buy tax liens in five minutes. Did I get that yeah, right? It's pretty easy. In yeah. Georgia anyway, it's fairly simple. Some States are fairly complicated. Right. We have a mutual friend in Charles sells who buys a, uh, actually they don't call them tax liens. I think they call them tax certificates in Illinois. And that process is a little bit more complicated outside the scope of this show, but uh, and Charles is doing very well with uh, tax liens and tax certificates, and uh, it doesn't take a lot of money to get in. Why? Okay, I, I, maybe you can't spec maybe you can't speculate on this one, but I was just going to say, why would um, why would you be able to buy a tax lien for as little as fifty five hundred dollars? Well, I've personally bought them for as little as five hundred dollars, and the answer to that is, what does the tax revenue, what is it used for? The county uses it to pay the fire department, the police department to run their 
county. So they're not interested in the equity in the property. They just want their taxes. So that's how you can get into owning a deed for $1,000, $2,000. Yeah. Well, who, who would let their property go for 1000 or $2,000? How does that ever even happen? You hear different stories, you know, divorce, um, loss of job, um, health issues, maybe senior with complications. Um, one way or another leads to a lot of times the homeowner leaving and feeling that, wow, I'm never going to be able to pay two or three thousand dollars in taxes and uh, they don't even make the attempt. And then some are just going to be late. And in those cases, your IRA is going to be paid a high interest rate. When there's a mortgage, and of course, I, I do know the answer to these questions. I was just kind of putting you on the spot a little bit, my friend. But when there's a mortgage on the property, um, most mortgages have an escrow that pays the taxes. The mortgage company actually pays the taxes because they're protecting their own interest. Believe me, my friends, they're not doing you a favor. They're not just, you know, paying your tax bill for you. They're making sure they collect it and they're collecting it up front. They make a little interest on that. And, um, and then they're paying the taxes, but not all loans come with an escrow and not all mortgage companies do it. And there occasionally are properties that have a mortgage loan on them that uh, the taxes don't get paid. These are the ones that the savvy tax and the tax lien investors really want. And the reason a lot more is, often than you think. Yeah. And the reason is, go ahead, Mike, tell us the reason. Well, the big question you get is, well, why doesn't the uh, mortgage company pay off the taxes? And the reason is, is those mortgages almost always have PMI or mortgage insurance. So they're going to get their money anyway from the mortgage insurance company. And in Georgia and a lot of other states, you know, that tax lien to the county tax commissioner wipes away all other debts, including the mortgages. Yes. Other than the IRS liens, the house property comes free and clear. That's right. Now, if there's no PMI and the mortgage company will no doubt come and redeem that, that tax lien that you bought. So then you get what you bid at the, on the tax sale plus 20% usually or something like that. Anyway, that's a little bit outside of the scope of what we wanted to talk about. Let's switch over to the, um, the person who's a little up in years, let's say 55. And they're one of those people that the TV commercials are targeting. Now they don't have enough money saved for retirement. They're going to be working forever. Um, granny's going to be spinning tunes at, at, as a DJ well into her seventies. Um, what can they do to, get on board with this and open up an account with you and get going right now. Opening up an account is fairly quick, takes five minutes. Um, it's a DocuSign application. We request the funds for them to come from their current uh, custodian. Now it's in their account. They just need to determine how much do they want to invest into real estate. There's no minimum. Um, they would determine that amount. Their IRA would buy that property. It'd be the buyer on the contract. It would send the earnest money. It would pay the rehabbers. It would collect the rents, any income if it's flipping, and all that income would go back into the IRA tax deferred or tax free if it's a Roth. Okay, we've got to go to a break, Mike, but if you can hold on for one more segment, um, I, I, I want to talk about some educational opportunities coming up. We'll be right back. My name's Pat K. Wood, and I'm from Cleveland, Tennessee, and I've been doing some flipping <laughs> since about March of this year and had started with a national program that was very expensive. I've spent today with Roger Blankenship learning about his program, and boy, do I wish I had met Roger first. He has a clear, concise program and many tools that are going to be very helpful in uh, starting and managing a program. And the mentorship and leadership and coaching that he's offering are invaluable. Thank you so much, Roger, for your time and sharing with us. And we are back. I'm Roger. He's Mike. And uh, we've been talking about making your money grow tax deferred or tax free. 
Mike is the uh, business development manager for Advanta IRA. And uh, it seems, I don't, I don't know what all that means, but it seems to me like you're the head honcho over here in um, the Atlanta office, right? I'm teaching the classes and going to the networking events and right. passing on the good word of self-directing. Yeah, speaking of teaching the classes, you guys have a lot of things coming out on social media and, and different things to keep people informed about all of the different opportunities. And uh, so just real quickly, tell us uh, how people can find you and follow you. We go to advantaira.com and then click on the events um, tab and you'll be able to see what's going on, you know, nationally where we have webinars um, anywhere in the world you can take. Uh, we do a two hour CPE class for attorneys and C, uh, CPAs. I teach a three hour CE class for realtors in Georgia at least two or three times a month. Then here in our Atlanta office in our local uh, corporate office down in Tampa. We have lunch and learns every couple weeks, which uh, coming up on the 23rd, we're lucky to have yourself as our guest speaker to teach people how to do it the right way. I'm fortunate to be there. Yeah, we, we're looking forward to that. So we try to have, you know, experts in their fields on different topics on the lunch and learns and uh, the webinars, like I said, are every week, the learning center on our website advantaira.com is really strong. There's a lot of educational stuff in there. Somebody could, could just start from scratch and leave an expert. Yeah. Okay. And I, I do follow you guys and uh, the, the kinds of things that you talk about and the coverage that you give and the things you do much appreciated by me. I feel like it's keeping me in the loop. Now, just recently we did a four part series here on the flipping America show on cryptocurrency and the technology behind it. And I know I've, I've seen some stuff from you guys about using your self-directed um, retirement account to invest in cryptocurrency. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, recently, obviously, with all the Bitcoin news, um, we've had a surge of people wanting to open an account and do crypto. Um, it's, it's a pretty easy step you create an llc that your ira is the owner of it's otherwise known as the checkbook ira and that llc is the wallet holder that you fund and that wallet purchases and holds the bitcoin or the different cryptocurrencies and okay. it's all within the ira umbrella so it's still tax shelter from your point of view do you treat this like a regular forex trader Yes. Okay. It's just, it's just another form of currency to trade in. It's an asset in their IRA, the LLC, and the LLC has a Forex account. It has a Bitcoin wallet. It has a gold account. It's the same thing. Okay. So that explains to me, I just answered the question for myself, how, uh, how you treat it and, and why it would be allowed under the rules. You know, it's pretty speculative, I think, um, but so is Forex to me. You're, you're basically just making a series of bets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really, any trading is a series of bets. And yeah. people having an E-Trade account that their IRA owns or Scott Trade or your local bank is older than... Well, uh, yeah, you know, um, life insurance is basically a bet. I'm betting the is, life insurance... One asset you cannot invest in with your IRA is life insurance. <laughs> yeah, but I was just thinking about the bets. I'm betting the life insurance company I'm going to die, and they're betting me I'm not, at least not until yeah. a certain age. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, uh, I think the insurance companies, you know, win those bets most of the time. Yeah. All right. So you can invest in all of these different things. It doesn't have to be in real estate. You can be in all of these different types of assets and trading in uh, cryptocurrency is fascinating. Um, do you guys provide direction? If somebody wanted to invest uh, a, a few thousand dollars in Bitcoin, can you hook them up with a place to buy Bitcoin? Because I don't know, you can't go down to the ATM and buy it. We can recommend three or four wallet providers that will allow an LLC to be the wallet holder. See, most of your... Bitcoin providers have exclusive 
uh, contracts with like Bitcoin IRA and different companies that have $20,000 minimums and charge 10, 15% in fees where Ooh. you can really do this for $295 a year. There's no need to pay someone $10,000 a year in fees. Right. Well, you know, I've already got a, a wallet set up as, as a result of the research that I just did, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm a little skeptical skeptical and you know people tell me all the time that real estate investing is risky and i think it's one of the least riskiest things out there that you can do for sure because the bank bankers are some of the most conservative people in the world and that's where they make most of their money by loaning on real estate yeah. so all right mike it's been great to have you today man thank you for taking your time and explaining some of this stuff to us uh, again give us the website and the phone number AdvantaIRA.com and the phone number is 800-425-0653. Officers are standing by. No, operators are standing by. That's what we say. Operators are standing by and uh, they're ready to talk to you and uh, help make a difference in your own life and your family's future. Thanks a lot, Roger, for having me. All right. We'll talk soon, my friend.